Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's Read the Gospels. And this month, the Let's Read the Gospels podcast is sponsored by our friends at Crew. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Each month here on Let's Read the Gospels, we're reading all four books. So go ahead, subscribe today. Join us as we read the Gospels together. So here's how this works. Most days, I read three chapters to you, but today we're actually only going to read two. That way, we finish in 30 days. We stay in the same book every day. So I'm going to read two chapters of Matthew to you today. You can listen or read along in your own Bible, and then I'll pray. And that's it. Today is May 9th, day nine, and I'll be reading Matthew chapters 25 and 26. And this month I'm reading from the CSB version. Matthew 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take oil with them, but the wise ones took oil in their flasks with their lamps. When the groom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a shout, here's the groom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. The wise ones answered, no, there won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. When they had gone to buy some, the groom arrived, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins also came and said, Master, Master, open up for us. He replied, Truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert, because you don't know either the day or the hour. For it is just like a man about to go on a journey. He called his own servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another, two talents, and to another, one talent, depending on each one's ability. Then he went on a journey. Immediately, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. In the same way, the man with two earned two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents approached, presenting five more talents, and said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I've earned five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. The man with two talents also approached. He said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I've earned two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. The man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you. You're a harsh man, reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. His master replied to him, You evil, lazy servant. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers, and I would have received my money back with interest when I returned. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw this good-for-nothing servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth." When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave Me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave Me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. 
I was a stranger and you didn't take me in. I was naked and you didn't clothe me, sick and in prison and you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Matthew 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he told his disciples, You know that the Passover takes place after two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the courtyard of the high priest, who was named Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus in a treacherous way and kill him. Not during the festival, they said, so there won't be rioting among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman approached him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. She poured it on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw it, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This might have been sold for a great deal and given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a noble thing for me. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. By pouring this perfume on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? So they weighed out thirty pieces of silver for him. And from that time, he started looking for a good opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city to a certain man, he said, and tell him, The teacher says, My time is near. I am celebrating the Passover at your place with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was reclining at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed, each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. He replied, The one who dipped his hand with me in the bowl, he will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for him if he had not been born. Judas, his betrayer, replied, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said it, he told him. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, Tonight all of you will fall away because of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter told him, Even if everyone falls away because of you, I will never fall away. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to him, Tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I have to die with you, Peter told him, I will never deny you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he told the disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Taking along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. He said to them, I am deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake with me. Going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. He asked Peter, So couldn't you stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came again and found them sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open. After leaving them, he went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing once more. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? See, the time is near. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let's go. See, my betrayer is near. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, suddenly arrived. 
A large mob with swords and clubs was with him from the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had given them a sign. The one I kiss, he's the one. Arrest him. So immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Friend, Jesus asked him, Why have you come? Then they came up, took hold of Jesus, and arrested him. At that moment, one of those with Jesus reached out his hand and drew his sword. He struck the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Then Jesus told him, put your sword back in its place, because all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot call on my father, and he will provide me here and now with more than 12 legions of angels? How then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal to capture me? Every day I used to sit teaching in the temple and you didn't arrest me, but all this has happened so that the writings of the prophets would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had convened. Peter was following him at a distance right to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and was sitting with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they could not find any, even though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two who came forward stated, This man said I can destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to him, Don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said it, Jesus told him, but I tell you in the future, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? See, now you've heard the blasphemy. What is your decision? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and beat him. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who was it that hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl approached him and said, You were with Jesus the Galilean too. But he denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about. When he had gone out to the gateway, another woman saw him and told those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. And again, he denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there approached and said to Peter, you really are one of them since even your accent gives you away. Then he started to curse and to swear with an oath, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed and Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. That's Matthew 25 and 26 in the CSB. Let's pray together. Jesus, I, I think about that part where you separate the sheep and the goats, the people who have helped the least of these. And you say, if you've helped them, you've helped me. And if you haven't helped them, you haven't helped me. And I just don't think about that enough, God, when I see someone in need and when I see someone who could use um, some attention, some a moment, a conversation, uh, some help, a cup of water. <laughs> I just don't think of it like it's you. And so I'm sorry for that. I I don't want to be like that. I want to have better eyes to see people the way you see them and to see them and treat them the way I would see you and treat you. So would you change that in me? Would you change that in all of us? That we would have eyes to see people um, and serve them like we are getting to serve you. So we love you, Jesus. We're grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.